We're less than a month away from the start of hurricane season. And last week, Rich was on special assignment. He was done at the Governor's Hurricane Conference in Orlando. So, uh, you know, each year they improve the technology and they better our chances of weathering a storm. What did you, what did you learn at the conference? A lot of the models that we've had for a long time have kind of just put all of Florida in one zone. And what we're talking about, more importantly, would be like storm surge and wind mitigation along the way. And so when we see our models, everything used to, if it was a category one, the storm surge was expected to be a foot. If it was a category two, two feet, if it was, you know, and those numbers aren't exact, but um, it was the way that the forecast was. Well, through a lot of research that was done here locally, they realized that our coastline isn't the same as Brevard County or South Florida or even into Southeast Georgia where we have different shelves, different step layers. Our tidal difference is between six and nine feet. South Florida is one to two feet. Southeast Georgia has some rivers that are even more than that. So when we're looking at these storm surge, a lot of the products that we're focused on were how much of that water under a surge could go inland. And not only that, just how much of the wind is going to impact as well. The two biggest of what would be the severe weather makers in the case of hurricanes. And then it was pretty neat too because we also got to the backside of those storms and it's the backside where we often see tornadoes. So there was a lot of tornado implementation into this as well. I hope that everything that I learned, we don't have to use. Not this You're year, not book, next yeah. year. I mean, because it has been a long time, uh, 2005. And that's also been, that was also the big talk is, yeah, hey, we're looking at a pretty average season that's to come up. What, what but does it, average mean? Average means that, uh, what, about a half a dozen named storms thereabouts. But it's in those average years where we've seen some of the biggest storms. Andrew, pretty average year, first storm of the season, and it only takes one to make that huge difference. And we got to actually go into the planes that go into these hurricanes. This is it here. You look at it at first, and you're like, that is one nice looking jet, but this thing is hooked up. It has every computer that you could imagine. Uh, they're basically taking what we have here as a weather system to depict weather they have so that they can get everything from inside of the storm and then immediately, and we're talking about in minutes here, feeding it back to us. One of the newest improvements that they've done inside is uh, the radar that they're going to be using. So when they're flying in the recon now, where we used to get just the numeric data, now we'll actually get some of the radar shots. So we'll be able to see where the eye walls are strengthening or maybe disintegrating. We'll get to see where they're water loading or the drier side of the storm. and. Uh, these guys, you know, I told them they've got the e-ticket, but this was the thing that I thought was kind of cool. I said, out of all of the storms that you flew through, what one really made a mark? And listen to this. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he went on to tell me that he's flown in Category 5 storms and everything else, but the pilot said his most memorable was going back and forth through Sandy, knowing that they were getting ready to downgrade Sandy, and I say downgrade, we'll even use the quote marks, because it was still an 80 mile an hour storm. It was the separation of the circulation. So declassifying would be a better word. And instead of a hurricane, Sandy, they called post-tropical, extra-tropical. And it's at that point where I think a lot of people went, ooh, okay, we really dodged a bullet here. No, they were just getting ready for what was going to be a really long 12 hours following that with the flooding that has become historic all up through uh, Tom's River. How, how rocky is that ride when they breach the storm? Um, they, they have some um, points in place that they can't breach, and those are G-forces. So on a downhill G-force, it's a little less, and on an uphill, it's about three or so, and that's where you kind of start losing um, some of what could be your faculties that you're going to need when you're flying in a situation like that. They're also five-point harnessed in. Every seat in there looks like a race car seat, so they're really well bound to the seat to keep them safe. But they do measure the G-forces, and when they hit a certain limit, that's where they have to say, okay, we have to find a safer part of the storm or it's time to get out. Uh, with the upgrades that they're doing this year, so I mentioned the uh, radar, we're going to be getting that in real time to our system and also the time that it takes for their data to come from the plane to our system now is even shortened. So within about two minutes, as they're flying through, we'll be getting all of the information in the event that we do have something in the tropics. Which helps us be better prepared. Which helps like us said, to tell the story to, to get prepared. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Be sure to download our News for Jack's Hurricane app. That way you can stay informed before, during, and after the storm. Search WJXT in your phone's app store, Nick.